World War I. Today it is known as the Great War, as it was the first war to incorporate many nations of the world. We've all probably heard of World War I, especially in high school class, but not many of us know about the facts that led up to the war, what the war was like, and what resulted from the war. Well, today, we'll attempt to answer those questions. The year is 1914, and there's relative peace in the world. The major European nations have devised a way to ensure that all countries can coexist. However, this balance is tumultuous, and cracks soon begin to show. The Balkans, a region comprising many nations, but particularly Bosnia, Serbia, and Herzegovina, previously had several wars as other European nations sought to claim their territories for the good of their nations. The result of this, the Balkan nations felt like other nations were out to get them, so political unrest and tension became the order of the day. The murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. All that was needed was just an event to spark off a war. And as it so happened, that event came on June 28, 1914. On this fateful day, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife decided to visit Sarajevo, the new capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina countries whose land had been lost to nations like Austria. It was no surprise when news came that the heir apparent of the Austrian kingdom was to visit Sarajevo. Six young people from Bosnia decided that this was their chance to take revenge and reassert Bosnian rule. Their chance came when the Archduke and his wife passed through a street where the assassins were positioned strategically. One of them threw a grenade missed the Archduke's car and instead hit one of his motorcade vehicles. When the assassin saw that he had missed his chance, he feared that he would be found out. He therefore decided to throw himself into a river overlooking the bridge. However, the river was dry then and he ended up injuring himself. The assassins felt they had missed their chance, but one of them, known as Gavrilo Princip, remained on the road Franz Ferdinand had just passed through. He did not know that fate was to give him another chance. This time around, he would not let it pass. As it turned out, the Archduke decided to visit the guards who had been injured in the first attack. Franz Ferdinand's driver then took a wrong turn, ending up the way he had come, little knowing that this move would alter world history forever. As Gavrilo Princip saw the car returning to him, he could hardly believe it. This was his second chance. He took out his pistol and shot the Archduke and his wife fatally, as moments later, they were both dead. And thus, Franz Ferdinand's murder set the ball rolling. The Beginning Most historians call this event the 9-11 of 1914, as it was this assassination that called the nations to war. When Austria-Hungary got wind of the news that their heir apparent was dead, their eyes turned to Serbia. The Austro-Hungarian government sent Serbia a list of demands. Most, if not all, were unacceptable. This was done to give Austria the opportunity it sought to end its interference in Bosnia by declaring war. Serbia agreed to all their demands, except one. Austria would hear none of this, and in their eyes, Serbia had rejected their terms. On July 28, 1914, Austria declared war on Serbia. World War I had started. Countries involved. What happened next is what you'd call unity and diversity of nations. This is because these two nations allied with other nations, dragging them into a war against each other. Austria-Hungary appealed to the German counselor, Kaiser Wilhelm II, for support, which he ultimately gave. So on the one hand, we have Germany and Austria-Hungary, and on the other hand, Serbia, who appealed to Russia to help. Russia agreed rallying along with its allies, including Belgium, France, and Great Britain. The course was set. Those were the sides, four against two. Let us see how the players would play this game. Serbian campaign. Confronted with Russia in the east, Austria-Hungary could save only a third of its military from going after Serbia. Following significant losses, the Austrians momentarily captured the Serbian capital, Belgrade. A Serbian counter-assault in the Battle of Kalubra prevailed, driving them from the country towards the end of 1914. From January to October 1915, Austria-Hungary utilized most of its tactical reserves to battle Italy. Be that as it may, 
Germany and Austria-Hungarian negotiators caused a coup by convincing Bulgaria to join the assault on Serbia. The Austro-Hungarian areas of Slovenia, Croatia and Bosnia gave troops to Austria-Hungary in the battle with Serbia, Russia and Italy. In late 1915, a Franco-British force arrived at Salonika in Greece to offer help and to constrain its administration to war against the Central Powers. Despite this, King Constantine was in support of the Germans. This move resulted in a fierce division between the King of Greece and the rest of the nation, which successfully split Greece into districts still loyal to the Lord and the new temporary administration of Venizelos in Salonika, who could not agree with the King. After lengthy negotiations and a confrontation in Athens between allied and royal powers, the King of Greece surrendered. His second child, Alexander, took his spot. Greece officially joined the conflict with the Allies in June 1917. Before World War I, military strategies involved open and individual warfare. When the war began, however, these methods quickly proved futile, as the technological advancements in the war created robust defense systems, such as machine guns, barbed wire, and the use of artillery. The war had, therefore, significant casualties and progress was slow. But back to developments. The Germans began the war by attacking two fronts, that is, the Eastern and Western fronts. Germany decided to invade France through Belgium, which had declared neutrality on the Western front. On the Eastern front, Germany invaded Russia. The Germans used an aggressive military tactic known as the Schlieffen Plan, which involved attacking the two nations simultaneously. German offensive in Belgium and France, Western Front. On the Western Front, the battle was heavy. German troops crossed Belgium on August 4, 1914, and began moving towards the city of Liga, which was heavily fortified. The Germans used siege cannons to break through the wall. On August 15, Germany took over Belgium. The German troops advanced to French territory and were just 30 miles from Paris in September of that same year. However, the Allied French and British forces confronted the army and sent them back to the Aisne River, almost 100 miles back. The German plans had faltered. This was known as the Battle of Marne. And following this conflict, both forces tried to outmaneuver each other, but unsuccessfully. By 1914, both sides had dug into a long stretch of trenches that ran from the English Channel to Switzerland. Here, the battle was fierce and neither side made any advances. The war was at a stalemate on the Western Front, even with both sides employing chemical warfare with gases such as chlorine, which proved unsuccessful. This went on for almost three years. During this period, two battles were fought. The Battle of Verdun, February 1916, and the Battle of Somme, July 1916. Heavy losses were incurred on both sides, with the French and British armies losing almost a million people. The causes of death were not just ammunition. Conditions in the trench became unbearable, with the increasing number of dead bodies, heat and dumping giving rise to massive infections, such as the Spanish flu, trench foot and even fever. Eastern Front On the Eastern Front, the Germans weren't having much success either. Russia had started invading the German-held regions of East Prussia and Poland. However, not all hope was lost, as the Austro-Hungarian and German forces won against the Russians at the Battle of Tannenberg in August 1914. To win this conflict, Germany had been forced to shift two corps from the Western Front to the Eastern Front, which resulted in the loss of the Battle of Marne. The Russian Revolution Luck was on Germany's side, as Russia was about to pull out of the war. Though Russia was a big nation, it still lagged behind its European counterparts in terms of development. Most of its citizens were poor peasants, so the country's economic situation was low. The war led to further economic instability and scarcity of food. All this discontentment eventually exploded in 1917, with revolution taking place. The revolution, led by Vladimir Lenin, ended Tsarist rule in the nation and led to Russia's subsequent withdrawal from the war. Germany now only had the Western Front to deal with. The US enters the war. Interestingly, the US had not been involved in the war all this time. 
President Woodrow Wilson favored adopting a neutral position and the nation just concerned itself with trade with its European counterparts. Unfortunately, the US was forced to take a stand as Germany started using submarine tactics to attack ships, even those that carried civilians. One boat, known as the Lusitania, carried many American citizens and was sunk in 1915. The public was, therefore, all for the war. Germany continued its attacks even on merchant ships and in April of 1917, America joined the war. This meant trouble. The Ottoman Empire Since the war on the Western Front had reached a stalemate, the Allied forces of Britain and France decided to attack the Ottoman Empire, which had joined Germany in 1914. Their first attempt was on a region known as the Dardanelles, which linked the Marmara and the Aegean Seas. This attempt proved unsuccessful. The Allies decided to increase their artillery and, in April 1915, carried out a large-scale invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula, resulting in a disastrous failure for the Allies. In 1916, they left the peninsula entirely after suffering heavy losses. Another nation that was important in this period was Italy. Italy decided to join the Allied forces and declare war on Austria-Hungary in 1915. In the 12th Battle of Isonzo, German forces helped the Austro-Hungarian forces win a significant victory against the Allies in 1917. However, the Allied forces, this time with America, came back to offer Italy assistance. And eventually, the Allied forces took the Italian front back. The Finale Back to the Western Front now. Germany had dealt with Russia and could now fully concentrate on its war with the Allies before the dreaded American troops came along. On the Allied side, French and British forces were barely holding on. Germany decided to go for one last shot. On July 15, 1918, Germany launched against the Allies, France, Britain and the US in a battle known as the Second Battle of Marne. It was here the war turned on Germany and the German troops were pushed back. In the following months, Germany suffered massive casualties and was forced to retreat to the border between France and Belgium, where they had started. By the fall of 1918, Germany and its allies were suffering losses on all sides. The writing was already on the wall, and the war was not going as they had planned. The Ottoman Empire was being attacked by invading forces and Arab revolts, and eventually, the Ottoman Empire signed a treaty with the allies in October 1918. On the other hand, Austria-Hungary was crumbling internally due to its growing internal struggles among its people, agreeing to a truce in November. Germany saw all this, and even within itself, cracks resulted from the dwindling scarce resources, mass deaths, and discontent. In the end, Germany sought armistice on November 11, 1918, ending World War I. The Aftermath one significant result of the war was the Treaty of Versailles. In the treaty, the Allied forces sought to build a world where such a war would not exist again. As we all know, this treaty failed to achieve this objective because Germany stoked the flames of World War II just two decades later. Germany had been humiliated by its war loss, with heavy requirements imposed, including paying for the entire war cost and reducing its army to a mere 100,000 soldiers. Moreover, the country was forced to sign the treaty and denied entrance into the League of Nations. All this built up significant resentment and bitterness in the nation, which exploded into another world war. Effects of the war World War I changed the entire course of history. This cannot be understated. It had many disastrous consequences as it led to the death of millions of people and the spread of major illnesses such as the Spanish flu. Major dynasties such as Germany, Austria-Hungary, Turkey and Russia fell. The war also brought a shift in combat methods by introducing chemical warfare, heavy artillery, machine guns, tanks, submarines, aerial combat and radio communications. It was the largest war the world had ever seen and its consequences can still be seen today.